Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent studies in regards to something that happened on the planet approximately 41,000 years ago. The event that's often referred to as the La Champ excursion. You can actually see it simulated right here in a video from ESA. And in a nutshell, this event was basically almost like a magnetic pole reversal, except that it wasn't. It was kind of like an incomplete reversal that happened during the last glacial period that seems to have dramatically affected the magnetic field of planet Earth for at least 400 years. But unlike a typical reversal, here this was not a long-term reorientation of the field, but seemed to be a more short-lived event that eventually returned the magnetic field back to normal roughly around 40,000 years in the past. And because this was such an unusual event, it has been extensively studied in the last few decades mostly based on examinations of various ice cores, but more recently by analyzing ancient trees discovered in New Zealand that actually existed about 42,000 years ago and whose rings revealed quite a lot about this event. We've actually discussed this in a much older video that should be in the description. And so in that sense today we know that approximately 42,000 years ago Earth's magnetic field seems to have weakened and wobbled but did not fully reverse. And as a result of this weakened magnetic field, it has been speculated that during this time Earth very likely received a lot more cosmic radiation, possibly affecting life on Earth. And interestingly, around this time, something else started to happen in regards to our own past. Because during this time, the two cousins, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, or basically humans, despite coexisting in certain locations, started to dramatically change in numbers with humans spreading across pretty much the entire planet and Neanderthals going extinct. And specifically by about 40,000 years ago, most signs of Neanderthals were almost completely gone. They were no longer the main species in Europe and seemed to have dramatically dropped in numbers in most other locations. And so as a result, for many years, researchers have speculated that maybe these two events are kind of connected. In other words, maybe there's a connection between the unusual geomagnetic event 40,000 years ago and the disappearance of Neanderthals mixed with the emergence of humans across the planet. And though this has been speculated before, this recent study you can find in the description essentially does this again, but this time by using additional models and additional simulations to try to discover what Earth was possibly like. And so here the study Wandering of the Auroral Oval 41,000 years ago sort of expands on the previous propositions like the one from 2010 where this geomagnetic event was kind of connected to the extinction of Neanderthals. And so in this video I wanted to briefly mention what this recent study is about, but also most importantly add a bit of a critical analysis to their overall conclusion, just so that you can basically make your own conclusion on what we have so far. But first let's actually go through the study and the modeling used here, focusing on some of the main discoveries. And once again here the model focused on recreating the effects, magnetic effects, in Northern Europe and in some other locations where humans were present. And we know that both humans and Neanderthals coexisted in Europe since approximately 56,000 years ago. This is based on a lot of different discoveries in various caves that essentially have signs of both species. And so in this study, by building models using space weather modeling framework, researchers focused on the heliosphere and planetary space environments in order to figure out what Earth was like in terms of geomagnetic properties. And the model in this case actually predicts the overall plasma system around Earth really well, even showing us where Earth would actually have aurora during some of the most active periods around the Sun. And while not surprisingly, aurora in this case were all over the place. For example, here most of the regions in the North would very likely have aurora, with many southern regions experiencing it as well. This was done through a 3D reconstruction of the Earth's geospace system. And so technically there were three separate models. One of them reconstructed geomagnetic field during the La Chambre excursion, one of them reconstructed space plasma around Earth, and one of them predicted what Earth's aurora very likely looked like. And so in that sense this new study is actually quite interesting. It sort of allows us to see what happens on the planet during these bizarre events when the magnetic field suddenly drops for hundreds of years. Although just as a side note, we don't expect such an event or even a reversal to happen for at least a few thousand years. So this is unlikely to matter anytime soon. Nevertheless, here researchers confirmed that during this time, Earth's magnetic field was extremely likely 10% of its current strength or even less, which forced Earth's magnetic poles to shift quite a lot 
making them appear very strange. This is actually best simulated by this ESA video I showed you previously. And that means that even in locations like the Northern Africa, it was possible to basically see Aurora pretty much all the time. Which I'm sure for these ancient humans was quite a spectacle. But they also discovered that the magnetic field poles, for example the North Magnetic Pole, seem to have moved a lot during this time, way way more than today. But as a result of this weakened magnetic field, here are the suggestions that, during this time, Earth very likely received way more radiation and way more UV light. Especially in locations where the magnetic field was not entirely connected, allowing way more cosmic radiation to seep through. And a lot of these open field regions, or basically a lot of these regions with high radiation, were also matched with certain locations where there was a lot of human and Neanderthal activity. At least based on the evidence from approximately 42,000 years ago. And so the regions of high radiation and the regions of human and Neanderthal activity basically kind of matched. But as the study here suggests, something else started to happen around this time. Here, based on a lot of archaeological evidence, we also know that humans started to do three separate things. The first one being, we started wearing clothes. And not just any clothes. Here we're talking about tailored clothing created by sewing things together. And this is actually based on a lot of archaeological evidence from around this time, where archaeologists discovered needles and awls dated to approximately the same time 40,000 years ago. This was based on discoveries on the Iberian Peninsula, mostly inside ancient caves. And so here sewing was basically associated with a new innovation by humans, which was basically a kind of a technological innovation that suddenly allowed us to protect ourselves from the sun. So far, sewing tools were mostly found inside human caves, but not Neanderthal caves. And this was a huge innovation. It basically allowed us to spread much farther, because here it allowed us to be warm anywhere, and it also allowed us to create a lot of other tools. For example, it now became possible to create various containers, such as bags. But because in this study the focus is on protection from the sun, here this was the first such defense. At the same time, humans also started to use caves way more often, suggesting that maybe hiding from the sun was the best solution. And then there was the third innovation mentioned in the study. Here we're talking about the use of ochre, or ochre pigment. Signs of which have been found in so many caves around the world, usually as a result of art. An ochre is a naturally occurring pigment that's actually been used as a kind of a sunblock for essentially hundreds of years. There is evidence of this being used in Africa 280,000 years ago. And it does seem to protect from UV radiation. And we actually know this works because even today, at least two ancient cultures still use it for the same purpose. Various ancient tribes in Africa, many of which are almost 100,000 years old, and independently Australian aboriginals that settled in Australia over 50,000 years ago. Which is very likely just an ancient custom that remained with us because it seems to really work. And so the overall conclusion in this study is that the technological adaptation of humans compared to Neanderthals, with the main focus being clothing and using sunscreen, potentially provided us with protection needed to survive this somewhat bizarre period. The period during which Earth received way more radiation. And it's a somewhat similar conclusion to that paper from 2010, which kind of offered very similar arguments. Except that in this new paper, researchers also matched some of the regions where humans and Neanderthals lived with possibly higher radiation due to the decrease in the magnetic field. And though this is definitely an intriguing proposition and an intriguing explanation for why Neanderthals did not survive, it's not necessarily the correct proposition. And here let's talk about some criticisms, or I guess some counter-arguments, that have been mentioned in many studies years before. Now the obvious one is the cave. Caves were actually used by pretty much all hominids. So it was not unique to humans. Clothing and tool making was also not unique to humans as well, and various tools had been discovered inside Neanderthal caves, very likely created by them in the same way. But what about that ochre and the sunscreen? Well here we actually have direct evidence that Neanderthals also did the same. This was actually discovered in a lot of Neanderthal caves, with the study right here going through more details, but in essence Neanderthal caves also contained cave art that was produced using ochre which can kind of imply that they also had access to the same pigment and very likely used it in a somewhat similar manner. And so even though this study claims that Neanderthals did not possess access to these technologies, that does not seem to be correct. There's definitely evidence that Neanderthals made tools, they also made cave art, they used ochre, and they obviously also lived in caves. 
For example, in this study, there's a definitive proof that Neanderthals also used very similar clothing to humans. And so the overall conclusion that Neanderthals perished because of the excursion is not really based on evidence. There is maybe a correlation here, but it's definitely not a causation and not a definitive reason. Moreover, based on the investigation of cowrie trees that basically lived around this time, it seems that Earth didn't actually experience any major changes during this time, including changes in climate that were previously expected if suddenly there's more cosmic radiation because it technically can lead to much cooler conditions. And on top of this, all of these events mentioned in the study, so here we're talking about the use of ochre, the use of tools to make clothes, the cave art, and the excursion itself, don't actually align directly in terms of timelines. None of these events were actually sudden, with many of them potentially appearing hundreds of years apart. And so once again, this is an intriguing correlation, and there are maybe some similarities, but overall, reaching such a strong conclusion currently would not be correct. The only thing we know for sure is that this event definitely happened. It definitely dropped the magnetic field of the planet down to about 5-10% to of current value, and it lasted for at least 400 years. But exactly what this did to the planet is actually completely unknown. Which means that we're going to come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos once there are some additional pieces of evidence. Until then, thank you for watching, check out some previous videos in the description, share this with someone who loves learning about science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.